Hey gang, welcome back to another video. Now it's long been established on this channel that I have an affinity for inconsequential movie props, particularly from Star Wars. I'm speaking of the types of things that you would usually just ignore, but they help to shape the world they exist in, and this project's no different. More specifically, I'm talking about the cabin lights found inside of the Millennium Falcon. You'd see them in all of the movies, and more recently inside of the Smuggler's Run attraction at Disneyland and Disney World, but I've never had a good reason to have one in my collection. Until now. So let's get to it. After a deep dive on the Replica Prop Forum website, I had all the information I'd need to get started on making one of my own. Now to get this project underway, I'm going to need to fire up my 3D printer and get to printing the light fixture portion, which fellow YouTuber Rebels Refuge was kind enough to send me a model of, since it'll take the longest to print. Once I had my printer running, it was time to fire up my Glowforge and get to cutting out all the larger pieces for this build. I was able to source the design for the main backing plate from the replica prop form and converted it into an SVG file that my Glowforge could read. Then it was cut out of 1 8 inch MDF. While I waited for that to finish up, I decided to try a technique called kerf bending or living hinge. It's essentially adding a series of cut lines along my MDF parts that provide just enough room for the wood to flex into a slight curve. The closer the lines, the more flexible the part. This was also sent to my Glowforge to be cut out, and then it was time to start assembly. With all my parts cut, and my CA glue at the ready, I can get on to building the base of the lamp, starting with the pieces I've used the kerf bending technique on. Now I won't make you watch me struggle with gluing these pieces together. Just know that having two thumbs instead of one will make the process much easier, and once it comes together, you can see just how useful that kerf bending technique can be. See? The cuts allowed me to wrap the two bands of MDF around the circumference of the disc, which is where our LED lighting will go. With this piece partially assembled, I'll give it a quick coat of paint and we'll set it aside to dry. And after our 10 hour print, the 3D printed light fixture is complete. So I pulled it off my printer and applied a few coats of UV reactive resin to help smooth out the print lines. Then I gave it a few coats of primer and a top coat of black hammered steel metallic spray paint. Fellow maker Vault Fox has a great video on this resin smoothing technique, so be sure to go and check it out. I'll leave a link to her video in the description. Up next, I need to address the top mounting plate. I'll base coat it with a matte black before airbrushing it with Allclad 2 Chrome. The matte black base dulls down the chrome to look something a bit more like aircraft aluminum, which should work perfectly for this piece. Once I'd gotten full coverage though, I realized that I didn't quite like how it looked. So I grabbed a chrome spray paint and dusted the surface to add a little bit of shine to it, which helped to catch the light a bit and give it a bit more of a metallic look. While I wait for the paint to dry, let's talk about lighting. For this project, I'm testing out a version of LED strip lights that I've never used before. It's designed to replicate the look of neon, but what caught my eye about it was that it comes pre-diffused so the lamp should have a nice even glow when it's powered on. So I cut down the LED strip to a length that fit the inner back plate and then fastened it in place with a bit of hot glue, being sure to leave the wire leads hanging out of the small opening in the bottom. I wanted to be able to dim this light, so I found a dimmer switch from another build and removed the plastic housing to reduce its size. But then I realized it wouldn't fit inside the lamp, which got me to thinking about how to hide the dimmer. So I grabbed a four inch PVC pipe and cut off an inch and a quarter section to house the dimmer. Then I hopped into Illustrator and drew up some designs that would act as a top and bottom and then cut the parts on the laser. This would allow me to turn it into a data port or control panel of sorts. This would also allow me to hide the dimmer in plain sight, but would also be a place to run the power cord to that would make it look a bit more Star Wars-y. I'll also use a bit of leftover tubing to extend some wire up from the dimmer to the LED strip to really drive home that Star Wars aesthetic. After a bit of painting, I used some CA glue to hold the dimmer in place and began to run all the wires through the two holes that I drilled in the top and bottom faces of the pipe. A bit of hot glue should keep my power cord in place permanently, and then it's time to close it up. Thankfully the cap fits snugly, so I won't need to glue it in place, just in case I need to access it later. 
Off camera, I did a bit of assembly and connected the wire leads from the dimmer to the LED strip and ran them through some split wire loom. Then it was time to test out my connections in the dimmer. Oh, and it needs a knob. There's a few last things I need to do to wrap up this project, starting with cutting a piece of white acrylic to diffuse the light and seal up the openings in the mounting plate. So once again, I powered up the laser and cut out a circle of white acrylic and glued it into the back side of the mounting plate with a bit of CA glue. I'll also affix the mounting plate to the base of the lamp, install the dimmer knob, and lastly, glue the 3D printed cautry lamp fixture to the mounting plate. The only thing left to do now is to weather it. So I grabbed my go-to oil paint color for weathering, raw umber, and a silver sharpie for all my chips and scratches and got to work. This is the most zen part of any project for me, adding points of interest to the piece with paint to tell a deeper story, and it really adds to the Star Wars Rebel aesthetic. Now it just needs to pass the solo test. Well, I may not be installing it into the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, but it is a fun way to bring a bit of my favorite movie trilogy into my everyday life. Well, that's gonna do it for this one. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>